Hello there, welcome to ESPN FC Live. Three times a week at this very time. And this is where it gets fun, because I'm going to introduce my guests, but I'm going to do this, 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 and this. So right up there, that's Shaka Hislop. Hello, Shaq. Hi, Mark. Okay, no, not that way. Dallin is what we got. Dallin Cuff is right here. Hello, Dallin. What's up, everybody? And Luis Miguel Echegaray, straight across from here. He's in the cupboard next door. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm, right next, I'm right next to you, Mark. Your travel, honestly, I wouldn't mind your air miles. You get a buy. We're going to start with somewhere <laughs> you have been in the past 24 hours. You've been watching Messi. What is going on? Oh, well, if the worst team in MLS signs Messi, they'll still be the worst team. Uh, no. Nine goals. He got the second last night in the League Cup semi final against Philly. So before you get a chance to say how good he is and what he's done, for MLS. Let's take a look at Messi's second goal for Inter Miami against Philly last night. Kristoff into the feet of Martinez has time to turn into Messi. Advantage play. Messi driving forward. Messi from distance! Shaka, I, I once said in, in commentary when he scored against the Athletic Club of Bilbao in the 2015 Copa del Rey final, that is ridiculous. And it certainly was. Now, Luis Miguel, you were there. And I want you to answer a question that was asked in that clip of commentary. What can he not do, Luis Miguel? I don't know. Mark, at this point, I'm really, I mean, it's just kind of crazy. And to your point at the very beginning of the show, yes, Lionel Andres Messi has taken over my life, by the way. I, I have now separated myself from my wife and Messi is now my spouse. I follow him wherever he goes. I'm absolutely tired, but it's an absolute blessing and an honor to watch him play. And as you mentioned, and as the video mentioned from our former colleague, Taylor Twelman, there are nine goals in six matches. It's unbelievable. And Yesterday was another personification of really what Messi has been all about. Philadelphia Union, before that game, conceded four goals in the entire tournament. They conceded four in one evening. And it was a very typical Philadelphia Union crowd. Every time he touched the ball, they booed him. Everybody was trying to just get behind the Union, but it didn't matter. And that goal showed. And listen, I was behind. I was facing forward watching that goal. I was right next to Fernando Fiore. And if you know who he is. He's an absolute massive Messi fan. And we're just watching what's happening here. And people say, oh, Andre Blake should have done better. Listen, the trajectory of that ball, the way it just skeeved towards the bottom right, he knew exactly what was going to happen. It was very difficult to stop. And it's the second longest shot in his career. And anyway, to round up this current journey of what's been going on, it's honestly unspeakable because it's not just about Messi. He's basically woken everybody up. Of course, Jordi Alba helps. Of course, Sergio Busquets helps. But this is a team. I mean, Robert Taylor turned into Ronaldo Phenomenal yesterday. He was amazing. <laughs> like, it's just this confidence. And I'll just finish with this, and I'm sure it can be a conversation when I leave, Mark. I wonder if this happens when you face Messi. Shaq and Dalen can chime in. You either live up to expectations, right? You either stand up to it, or you fall like a flat in a cupboard. And I feel like every team I've seen since he arrived, Cruz Azul, Atlanta United, Orlando City, FC Dallas is the only one that gave him a fight. Everybody has psychologically just been like, oh, my God, Lionel Messi. And they haven't been able to keep up. It's been incredible. Yeah. And before we continue our chat about Messi, it looks like you've got a giant either plant or a bit of black hair sticking out the right-hand <laughs> side of your head. But that's just me. And it's not, oh, yeah. it, was just, it was putting me off. And I just wanted to address that's, that. That's the messiness <laughs> coming out of my head right now. Mark. There we go. Thank you. Shaka, have you been surprised at how big an impact Messi has had? Yes, I have. 
Uh, listen, I, I, I am one of those voices that, that was saying Messi's coming into easily the worst team in Major League Soccer and it would take a whole lot more than, a, than an ageing Messi, an ageing Busquets and an ageing Jordi Alba to transform this team. Well, I, I, I couldn't be more wrong. Not only have they transformed this team, they've transformed this league, they've transformed how others, otherwise very good teams, very good players, um, play. And, and, and look for, 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 for 90 minutes. And, and while I, I understand uh, Luis Miguel's sentiment about, about that second goal, I am as big an Andrew Blake fan as, 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 as there is. Sure. And I thought he should have done better. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I do not think that there is another player who hits that ball from that far out that beats Andre Blake. That ball bounced, what, two, three times on the way to, to, to the bottom corner? And while, yes, it was inches inside the post, Andre Blake has eats those up for, for, for breakfast every, well, every other single day. And, and that, for me, is, is kind of um, the most alarm. Well, maybe alarming isn't, isn't the, the word. The most surprising thing about this, that players who we have lauded over in Major League Soccer for years are all of a sudden looking far less than ordinary. It would be okay if they looked ordinary, but a lot of very good players are looking far less than that. Okay, Shaq, Darla, just, uh, that's, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, Mark. That's my thing I find fascinating here. There's like an awe situation. We could be in awe of watching him, but I feel like the guy – you saw him in the tunnel yesterday meeting the refs. The refs were excited to meet him. The guys in the field, <laughs> there's so much space in the midfield yesterday. And that first goal, they stepped up and it wasn't uh, too messy, but able to play a ball over the top with – no pressure. I feel like there's a, there's a level of respect, obviously, but it's almost like they're in awe of him on the field. And there's – at some point, somebody's going to have to be more physical and, and really want to compete and battle with this guy. And it may get a little ugly because he's doing whatever he wants. And his teammates – what I found fascinating too, it's it's not to make always make an NFL or, an NBA or an American sports comparison, but when Tom Brady went to the Bucks, anybody who talked around that program was saying that the level of expectation went up from here – way up to here. And they, mm -hmm. those guys had never experienced that before. They never felt that. Well, as a club, Inter Miami have never felt this. And on top of that, you bring him in. You already have a coach that's managed at the, at the absolute pinnacle of club and international football. You have Busquets and Alba, who played at the club international level, at the most elite level, won everything possible. Alba scored yesterday. Busquets has hooked him up with assists. Like, those guys are playing at a good level in terms of what they're capable of at their term, in their age. But everybody around them has been elevated, and I feel like their competition is playing in all. Like, we've gone in two different directions – did I expect him to have a bump and play well? Yes, and then be good. When you look at whether it was Jermaine Jones that came into this league and after the 2014 World Cup and helped lead them to an MLS Cup, you saw my, Michael Bradley, you saw Clint Dempsey. These are these are good American players coming back. This is the greatest mm -hmm. player of all time. So we had to assume another league is different now than it was then that he would do something. This was unexpected, and also the the lack of opposition has been uh, remarkable and notable. Just kind of like sitting in awe of the guy. Dallin, a couple of things to, to forward that conversation that you've just mentioned. One, if you've watched the first episode of Hard Knocks, you see what the Jets players are now kind of, they're in awe of Aaron Rodgers being here. And it mm -hmm. kind of gives them a belief that we're good, but we could be great because we have got greatness in our midst. And to do with the, the other players kind of being in awe, being on the same field, look at the little mascot that was in front of Lionel Messi yesterday. He looked around and he's like, oh. He said, Mom, Dad, you better be getting this on camera because I want this in my bedroom. <laughs> the one thing I want to talk to you about, Dallin, is Gary Smith, the Nashville coach. Okay, He's got, what, 48 hours, 60 hours before they face Messi and Inter Miami in the weekend in the League's Cup final. How do you stop him, Dallin? I guess I think there has to be a level of physicality. You can't like, just gonna mark him out of the game or something like that. And I do think the other players, to, to LME's point, have been very good and better than expected and better than they were before. I think there has to be an attention that he's not going to imprint the game whenever he wants. Now, everybody that's ever played Messi wants to do that. Now, teams have done it in different ways and with different skill sets. I do think there's got to be – I think at some point you're going to want as, as an opponent – like, I've had enough of this guy. I've had enough of the train. I've had enough of the excitement of everybody loving this. And people keep saying good for the league. This is the only, this is the only league in our, in our country. And maybe and there aren't many in the world where people look at it and say, hey, this is really good for the league and care more about that than what's going on on the field. Like in the NBA, when Jordan's coming up, nobody, Jordan rules existed to beat the hell out of him when they, the Pistons played against mm -hmm. him because there was no other way to stop him. So I think there's an element of there have to be, we do not care what else is going to happen. We have to find a way to shut him down. Maybe that's Mark him one, two men, and be as ultra-physical as possible. You're not trying to injure Messi. 
but you're definitely not making it as easy. And I feel like he's always floating. And now he knows how to find the spaces. We know that his movement's outstanding, but he's always seems to be operating in space way more often than he needs to if you're trying to beat this team. Yeah, yeah, we're keeping tabs. Just, Luis Miguel, start... sorry, we're, we're, we're keeping tabs on, on questions at the bottom of the screen. So feel free if you're watching this to get in touch with that. Luis Miguel, I've got a question for you, which is, has come in and, and all four of us have been talking about the influence that Messi has had. You'll be in Nashville on Saturday. One of the questions is, can there be an influence that Messi has on the referees? It's like, I'm Lionel Messi, I can do what I want. Can that happen? Could referees be in awe? Or do we need strong referees to ensure that everything is fine? No, of course. Of course you need good referees. And listen, like, I, I'm not here to, 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 to spend this segment, uh, you know, uh, you know cl clamping down on, on officiating because we, we have seen in MLS a, a few questionable decisions. But of course that's going to happen. As Dallin said, like, before kickoff yesterday, like the rest were like high fiving Messi and all that stuff. So it can happen. It can happen with the best of the best, right? I, I do want to say one thing though. I have been watching, following Lionel Messi live since he arrived to Miami from Cruz Azul to Philadelphia Union yesterday, against Orlando City, Dallas, Atlanta, Charlotte. And in terms of the physicality thing, I'm going to make this very clear so everybody like, just knows. Because when you watch him live, it's a little different than when you watch him on TV. This man is, obviously, aside from his talents, is so brilliant at knowing when he needs to speed up, when he needs to slow down, where he needs to be. Everybody's playing checkers. This man is playing three-dimensional chess. He knows exactly what to do, when to do it. The first 30 minutes of the Philadelphia Union game, they were trying to do what Dallin said. They were trying to be yeah. physical. They were trying to hurt him. And Messi doesn't care. He, he makes you come to his little cave and you come out of it half dead because he knows exactly what you're trying to do to him. He has seen it his entire career. He has seen it when he was an eight-year-old kid growing up in Rosario because he was smaller than everybody else. This is instinctively within him to just understand that physically they're going to try and number him. He's just faster, better mentally and physically. Now, the thing that Nashville can do, because what I saw yesterday was interesting, is that what do you do in terms of the decision that Messi wants to make? Because so far, aside from the goals, nine and six is great, but he's so good at creating spaces for other people. So you now need to understand that all right, who is Messi trying to get the options to? If Nashville can minimize that, right, the likes of Joseph Martinez, Robert Taylor, et cetera, then maybe they have a chance. But if you're trying to outnumber Messi from a physical standpoint, if you're trying to get in his face, he's going to win mm -hmm. every single time. I promise you that. Can, can, okay, I, can, I, just, can I just Sorry, add sorry. to that? I, I, I don't think that being physical up against Messi works. I, I think he's he's used to it. I, I, I don't think there's been a better player at playing up against physicality than Dylan Messi. Yeah. But if, if I'm Nashville uh, and I'm trying to figure out how I cope with, with, with this version of, of Inter Miami and, and Lionel Messi's influence on it, I, I, I learned my lesson in, in the way that Philadelphia kind of drew up a plan and that plan seemed to go flying out of the window. Now, Philadelphia have played three at the back for the last two or three games. So that formation um, that we saw last night was not really that new to them. What I felt was new was how in disarray defensively Philadelphia were. If you look at the first goal, um, Lionel Messi gets on the ball, and I think it's, it's Damian Lowe who, who steps to Messi, and he just picks a ball over the top to Joseph Martinez over the top of Elliot. Fantastic ball. But you have three centre-backs, one gets sucked in, the other two are way too far apart, and Joseph Martinez, who we've known as a fantastic goal scorer, at least from his time in Atlanta, maybe he hasn't shown that up until now in, in Miami, but finds himself one-on-one, -on -one, in behind, shows strength, shows good finishing. And then the second goal where, again, we're kind of pointing at, at Andre Blake, but look at Philadelphia defensively. Joseph Martinez gets on the ball, Damian Lowe again, goes in to, pre to press higher up. He fouls and, and, and probably could have got booked as a result. But the ball pops loose to Lionel Messi. And now the, the two centre-backs, Glessons and, and, and Elliot, are dropping off. They are wide apart. They're not sure what to do. And Lionel Messi finds, finds the finish. 
if my, my point is, if if you have a plan, whether it's we're playing high up and we're letting them have the, the space in behind and we we'll cope with that, or we're dropping off and we're having defensive midfielders pick up that space in, in, in front, stick to that plan. What mm -hmm. you cannot have is one player doing one thing, another doing another, and the third, in, in, in Philadelphia's case, kind of in, in, in the middle trying to figure out where he is. That that's not going that's that's not going to work. Not against not against into Miami. Okay, thanks to Luis Miguel Echegaray. Um I wouldn't be going in Messi's cave if you say half of them come out <laughs> dead. So just be careful when you're in Nashville and, and what you do. Luis Miguel, safe travels and we'll hear from you when you get to Tennessee. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.